So after I graduated, you know, I really just decided to do whatever I wanted. I didn't really care about God. My parents had moved down to Georgia, and then they had to move right back because they were going down, picked up and moved their whole family and got down to Georgia to go to this church. Then crazy stuff happened, and they had to come all the way back. And then when that happened, I was just like, you know, if they're going to move all the way down to Georgia and then come all the way back just to follow God and then not work out, you know, what, what's the point of me doing it? You know, I'm, I don't want to do, I have to do all that stuff. You know, I'm not into that stuff. Then they started coming here, and then I started coming here a little bit. And then um, one night, I think it was like a Sunday night, uh, we was having just like a real good service. And I just really felt led to go down and get prayed for. And this is the first time I got prayed for or prayed in a long time. I actually asked Matt to pray for me. That was, that was kind of the beginning of me getting back to where I needed to be, and it still took forever afterwards. Um, you know, I still didn't do anything I really needed to, but that was kind of the beginning of where I needed to go. And um, one thing I just want to say about that night is I prayed after I got, after I got prayed for. I prayed God, I, I just asked God to, to never leave me again, is what I said. I said, never leave me again. But then it's, it's the clearest I've ever heard God speak to me. To this day, almost. Uh, he told me that he never left me. Amen, right? ne never. And uh, that, that still, to, still to this day, that really just touches me. Because, like, he, the whole time, I was doing, like, this horrible stuff. Like, if I told y'all, I mean, it's definitely not appropriate for Facebook Live and stuff like that. It's, it's just bad stuff. And during all that, you know, he never left me. He never forsake me. And that was just, like, this is a big thing for me. Man, that really, like, touched me. And it's kind of after I, after he said that, it's kind of that's kind of just a dumb thing to pray. Like he never, for him never to leave me again. But uh, I got this word. Well, Charlie asked me to preach beginning of February or December, not February. But um, and I started getting stuff together. But then I went down to the ramp, and I actually got this. It, it's along the same lines of what I was going to preach, but I got. This title, especially, I didn't have a title before then. It was actually a Chick-fil-A parking lot with another ramp, which was kind of cool. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and read uh, two passages. It's, the first one is John 15, 7, or John 15, 1 through 7. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I spoke to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides the, in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If, it, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch, and is withered. And they gather them, and throw them into the fire. And they burn, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. And the second one is going to be 1 Corinthians 9 through 13. But it is written, Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. For God has revealed to them, revealed them to us through the Holy Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. For man, for what man knows, the things of a man, except the spirit of a man, which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. And now we have received not the, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak not in words, which man's wisdom teaches, but which comes, which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. Just what I really want to talk about tonight is just having a personal relationship with God. And, you know, you know, we always talk about God being our Father, you know, and which He is. He's our Creator and stuff. But really, it's more, the relationship with God is more of a partnership. You know, it, it takes both of you to, to be able to do anything. You have to seek Him before He does anything for you. You know, and... When I was at the church, I, I didn't seek him, so I didn't feel God. And even when I was in church, I never really, like, seeked him after church or out of church. So, 
So he's not going to move in your life if you're not really seeking him. I just want to read a couple more verses that kind of like tie their stuff together. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. And then uh, Matthew 7, 7 and 8 is, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks it shall be opened. And what all three of those verses have in common is that they all start with saying you have to do something. Verse 1 is, But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Psalms 37 4 is, Delight yourself also in the Lord. And Matthew, ask, seek, knock. Like, those are all things you have to do first. And I've had those verses in my phone for as long as I can remember. Because I always like what it said. Like, you, all these things will be added to me. You'll get the desires of the heart. But it wasn't until recently that I realized that what it said before that, that you have to do something. You have to seek him before anything will happen in your life. That's right. And stuff doesn't happen just because you want it to. You have to seek God for anything to happen. Amen. And your relationship with God should be a lot deeper than just believing he, he's real. Or coming to church Sunday, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Like... God wants more from you than just you coming to church. Because really, that's not a big deal. A lot of people come to church. He wants more from you than just knowing the Bible. Because honestly, everybody knows the Bible. Even Satan knows the Bible. Satan knows God exists. So, I mean, you see where he's at. Yeah. <laughs> and what, after I got this, like, below the surface title, I really kind of prayed about it when we was at the ramp, you know, during the services. What it really meant to me, like, I didn't have, like, a vision or a dream or anything like that, but, like, I tried to just kind of visualize what that meant. And, and what, what it means, but what I got from, like, the surface is, the surface is kind of just, like, what you see. So, like, if you just look at this pulpit, on the surface you just see wood. That's all, that's all you see. You can't really see what's in there unless you're really, like, looking for it. Like, if you open these doors, look at what's underneath it. And stuff like that. So you can't you can't see what God really has for you just by coming to church. You can't really have any type of power or any type of anything just coming to church. That comes with seeking God outside of church. That comes with really praying outside of church. There's a lot of people coming to church, but there's not a whole lot of people that wants to make the commitment to really trying to seek God after church. And it's really a choice you gotta make. Because God really wants all of you. You don't want this like you part time. Like, it ain't some, like, mom and pop thing where you get, one person gets something on the weekends, and then the other person gets them, you know, Monday through Friday. He wants you 24-7, seven days a week, like, 365 days a year, that you should be seeking God at least Amen. some, at some point during the day. And really, God doesn't work at the surface. And what I mean by surface, I mean, like, natural things, how man sees stuff. And the surface is, let me see what I got. The surface is, like, the natural Karma, what we see, touch this stuff. And God doesn't work on this. Because clearly I still look the same. From the, going to the ramp, and I come here real scrawny, got a big nose. Thanks to that. But. So it doesn't really work on the outside. And it was real cool. I was, I was looking around while I was at the ramp, and there's just like tons of different types of, types of people. It's like all dressed different, all look different. And it's all cool because we was all doing the same thing, and that's just worshiping God. And it doesn't really matter what you look like on the outside. You know, people get worried about, you know, wearing your Sunday's vest and stuff like that. Like, it's, God doesn't really worry, ain't really worried about what you look like on the outside. I mean, you just got to come and really want to seek Him. That's all he's really worried about. Right? And, like, this this whole Christianity thing, like, like when I first started coming back to this church, well, when the first time I started coming back, I, didn't, I was real bitter towards just, like, church in general. Like, just, like, the idea of church. Because... I just thought it was just like dumb at that point. I was just like, we're coming, we're, we're worshiping somebody. I mean, I still believe in God, but like we're worshiping God that we can't see Him. Like we're praying about stuff that may or may not happen. And I was just real bitter towards it, and I like didn't understand like why I had to come to church. Like Dad and Mom and Dad like, drug me out of my house. I was living by myself at the time. Drug me out of my house to come. And I told the story the when I got prayed for, actually, that I hated everybody that mom likes to bring up a lot, but it's really more than just coming to church. It's really 
Like church is important. You have to come to church. But it's not that you that you have to come to church. You should want to come to church. Like, like church, the way you act at church, it should be like a reflection of how your relationship is with God outside of church. So like everybody, you know, we're all praising and stuff, but like you should be doing that while you're at the house too. Like it's not just a Sunday thing, we come here and do it for an hour, you know, we're good to go until next next Sunday, but that's not it, that's not gonna get you anywhere. Like you may be saved, you may go to heaven, that's all fine and dandy, but you're not gonna like do anything for the kingdom of God just coming to church. And like one thing I had a problem with when I was like y'all's age, you know, a lot younger, um, is I didn't know how to like get a hold of God. Like I wanted to hear God's voice. I've always wanted to hear God's voice. Mainly just to prove to myself that he was real, that he was in my life. And what I didn't know is how much effort it took to get to get that. Like you going to church, I went to church every every Sunday. That doesn't that doesn't get you hearing from the, the voice of God. What gets you hearing from the voice of God is really seeking after Him. And I got another verse that's Proverbs eight seventeen. I love those who love me, and those who dil- seek me diligently will find me. So really what that means is like you have to be seeking him like constantly and really be going after the things he wants you to have. And you can't just like come to church because that doesn't do anything like I said. But But like just coming to church doesn't really do anything. And not everybody is willing to make a sacrifice like that. Not everybody wants to go, you know, 24-7 really seeking after God. Because it's, it's really like a choice. Like this like this Christianity stuff, the way it's really supposed to be is more of a lifestyle lifestyle than it is just like a you know, it's an activity we do. Like we get up Sunday, go go sing some songs, you know, hear a pastor preach, and then we go home, you know, watch some football or something like that. It's it's a lifestyle. This this stuff should be life changing. Like yeah. you can't act like the world because you're not of the world. Right. Yeah. And Going back to like the whole surface thing, and what what I mean by like below the surface is going below the surface. So to do that, you really have to seek after God. And what I mean by surface is what I said, just like natural, carnal, spirit, just like religious stuff, just like traditions that churches have. You know, going you know on Sunday, Easter, you know, we sing a few songs, we take up offering, then we're going to preach, then we're going to have altar call. It's more than that. Like to really really get below the surface and what I mean by that is is just being able to see what God how, basically how like God sees your life that's how, that's how you're going to be able to know God's will for your life that's how you're going to know God's calling for your life is just seeking after him and I didn't get that when I was like younger I didn't get that when I was like, even like in high school and even really recently honestly because I thought just you know I went to church like what, what more is there to do I go to church every Sunday, you know, I believe in God, you know, like, what, what more is there to do? But, like, after, I, after going on the ramp, especially, like, I really realized just how real this stuff is, like, how real, real God is. Yeah, and it's right. not just like a, he's not just like an idea or like a, it's a big, big guy in the sky or something like that. But, like, he's like, you have, you got to have a personal relationship with him. Come on, baby. And, and what's funny is, I was reading... And it's talking about, uh, I was reading somewhere in Matthew, and I don't remember where it was, but it's talking about when Jesus was about to get crucified, he went to the, into the garden and was praying. He was like praying to God for him to take this cup away. And what I took away from that is just how, like, how scared he was. Like, God, like Jesus was like human. Like he was completely human. He was like man and God at the same time. And what I got with that is just how God just like humbled himself basically. Like Jesus like humbled himself basically to become a man. Like he, like if you smacked him, he was gonna hurt just like us. Like if he was gonna fall, he's gonna get hurt, like cut scrapes. I mean he died like the worst death ever so that we can do what we're doing now. And yeah. people wanna like penny pinch God with their time and just like, yeah. well, I mean it's this and that. Well I went to church this Sunday, there's no point of going next Sunday and stuff like that. And Freddie actually made a good point. While he's at the house talking all the time, he said, people just try to get so, like, there's, like, a line, basically. Like, there's saved, and then there's unsaved, basically. And people try to get so close to that line, and just will just stand there, and just will try to really go after God. But God, but Jesus come down and died for us. Yeah, man. Like, died for us. What more could you want to really seek after God? Like, people get, 
like this penny pinch with penny pinch with their time and their effort and their money. Yeah. And they just want they just want they just want to, you know, go into the heavy ticket basically. And that's not what we're here for. We're here to like build this kingdom. We're, we're yeah. supposed to be going out and get people to come in. Like we're not supposed to be here just to high five each other that we're all going to heaven because that's not what we're here for. We're here to go out and get people. Another thing is like when I was like really praying about it, about the whole surface thing, it's like what I what I, I was trying to just like visualize what it meant. And basically what I saw, like it wasn't like a vision or nothing like that, but I saw like like a ledge. Like there was a ledge and then there was water. But the water wasn't like shallow like it like it normally is, like you're going into a lake or something like that. It wasn't like you could step into it and just like gradually get bigger. It was just like a straight drop. And after praying about it, it really was just like God wants all of you or none of you. There's no, there's no just like halfway with God. He wants, he wants you to be fully in with Him. He, like going to church doesn't cut it. That's not getting below the surface. That's not knowing God. That's not knowing what God's about. Like you can't know what God's about. Yeah, you may know the stories and you may know, you know, about the ark and you know Jesus come down and die, die for our sins and stuff like that. But you don't really know who God is on a personal level. Like He knows us. He knows us. Like better than we know ourselves. It's, people say that he knows how many hairs is on our head. So if he knows us that personal, how come we can't know him on that level too? Yeah. And another thing is like people really like if you're not really seeking after God and really trying to go after God, it's hard to understand, like I said, what, what God's really about. And what ends up happening is like this whole religious stuff and you don't really you don't really get what God's wanting for you in your life and in your church and in your family. That's why we have just a bunch of dead churches and that we have all this like stuff happening. And people just ain't really want to go after it. And then they start just making up their own stuff. That's why we have like all these conspiracies in the Bible and stuff like that. People want to just Make up a bunch of junk and stuff like that. Without really like seeking after God, you're not gonna get you're not gonna gain anything. Another verse I have is Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not onto your own understanding, and all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord and depart from evil. Know, we all know the verses and stuff like that. And I was really, as I was praying, I just wanted to God, God to reveal to me what He meant. But like just going deeper, like what, what's the point of like really? Like how do you go deeper? How do you go deeper just by like reading the Bible? And how, how do you go deeper just by praying? Like what, what do you need? And the two verses He gave me was Philippians four thirteen and John three sixteen. And those are like the two most common. Like verses in the Bible, I'd even like put like the text on, of them on there because like everybody knows them. You know, you can do all things through Christ. And then John three sixteen, you know, die, die for us that we may have everlasting life. But if you really just like think about it, like how much power is really in Philippians four thirteen that you can do everything through Christ with yeah, strength. It's not just like something we say when we're at school and oh, I hate this class. Philippians 4.13, you know, stuff like that. Like, it's not it's not that. There's, like, chain-breaking power with, like, that verse right there. I mean, you can do everything with that verse right there. Both in verses. The most two common verses, really, to me, is those two verses. And the John 3.16, that's, that's, that's Christianity and a verse right there. I mean, you take away all the verses, and you're just left with John 3.16. That's what it's about. That God, that Jesus come and died for our sins. That way we may be saved. And like, that's, like... It has so much power behind it. That, dude, it just really gets watered down because we all know that verse. But, like, man, that's that's it right there. That's that's what we're here for is John 3.16. That's why we're still here. That's why I'm able to come up here and preach after doing all that God knows what, stuff like that. That's why people that's been up here, like my dad, my brother, like 
everybody that's been able to come up here and preach, and, and that's it. Like, that's why. Is that verse right there. And one thing, another thing, I'm, this is my last point. It's like things that will really keep you from getting where God wants you to be. And I think there's three things. And it's, they're not even sins, which is it's funny how like Satan will work like that. It won't even be sins. It's not even something you can see unless you're really like looking for it. And the three, th three things is uh, contentment, self-pity, and procrastination. Like contentment is being satisfied with where you're at with God. Like, you know, I'm here. I'm, I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. What more can I ask for? Clap when they say to clap. Raise our hands when we ask to raise our hands. Self-pity. Not, not thinking you're good enough. And that's something I've always struggled with. It's just like, like, just me being like who I am. You know, I've never had a lot of confidence like really growing up. And that's one thing I pray for at the ramp is just have confidence and boldness. It's like, cause when you don't feel like you can do anything, then you can't. Because God can't really work in you unless you you allow him to work in you. So if you're sitting there thinking you can't do anything, then you're not going to do anything. You have to believe in yourself before you do anything. Just because right. all the scriptures say, you know, I can do all things through Christ. Well, you have to believe that before you do anything. Like, God's all-powerful, but you have to believe that he will work in your life regardless. Yeah. And procrastination. Mom's likely to fall out in the spirit over this one because... She said, I'm the world's worst, and I really am. Like, I, it is the worst in everything. Like, I, I, this is every, it's every part of my life I'm just slow. But what I mean by, like, procrastination is, it's kind of like contentment almost. But the way procrastination works is it almost gives you like that, like, false sense of security. Like, you're, you're okay right now. And I've done that a lot. Cause like, after I got prayed for that night, I really just kind of fell back in that procrastination. Well, I need, I know I need to do this. I know I need to do that, but but I'm okay right now. Like, there's always tomorrow. There's always next week. There's always next year and stuff like that. Like, this whole, like, preaching thing, I was supposed to be doing this a long time ago, but, like, a long time ago. But I just let, I just let like, this, just, like, we're okay. You know, I'll get to it later. I still want to do the things I want to do. And that's a, that, that'll kill you right there. That'll send you straight to hell if you ain't careful because, like, you, you could get, like, I got so far away from God, and I didn't even know it just because I was just content, and I got more content, and just more farther and farther away, and just like, well, I'll, I'll get to it later, and, you know, it was like, God's just beating on my chest, like, hey, you need to, you need to wake up here, and I was just going to slower and slower, like, I'll get to it later, and like, that, that, that's the world's worst, and I'm, I'm still the world's worst about it, like, that's, that's another thing I pray for, is just like, just really go after God. And that's all you can ever really pray for. And all you really, that's like all God wants from you is just really to seek him. You know, they say he's a jealous God, and he really is. Like, we could give time, give all this time to YouTube videos, TV, like games. I think I just preached to myself, but. <laughs> Come on. But, like, we could do all that. And that's another thing that God revealed to me while I was at the ramp. Like, I have to, I have to make time for him. Like, you have to make time for him. Like, I can sit for hours and watch this stupid YouTube videos, like. I, this, the, the dumbest of things just to keep me entertained, but I can't sit read my Bible for 30 minutes without like falling asleep, basically. So like, that's all he wants from me is just all of you, and that's basically it. Like, if you want to have a personal relationship with God, like the way you're supposed to, is just give your heart to God, all of it, all your effort, all your time. Just really seek after Him because He's real, and He'll show how He'll show you how real He is when you start doing that stuff. And that's the one thing I had a problem with is just like I didn't. I, I couldn't see, like, the tangible things that you could get from God. Like, I, it's just like, ideas, like, oh, I can get speaking to tongues, or I can prophesy, but, like, I know, all these blessings. Like, if you're if you're struggling with something, like, he can set you free, it, like, just by seeking him, just by praying about it. Like, that's what I mean by, like, self-pity stuff. Like, you don't have to be perfect to do anything. Like, you don't have to, I'm not perfect up here preaching. Like, nobody that's been up here preaching is perfect. You don't have, you don't have to be have all your ducks in a row. Like, I wasn't really... Like, you'll never feel, feel prepared for preaching. And I definitely feel less, less prepared as soon as I got up here. But but you're never you're never going to feel good enough. And that's one, that's one lie Satan will tell you until you're dead is that you're not good enough. You're, you're not going to do it. You've sinned. You can't do it. Like, you're not going to do it. You're going to fail. You're going to look retarded. And that's one thing you got just got to know, that if you just will seek God... More than you'll seek anything else in the world. That's when he'll really start showing you 
who he is. Because all this stuff right here is just like natural stuff. Yeah. So if you really want to get into the spiritual things of God, you really have to seek after that spiritual stuff. Like I said, seek, you know, ask, like knock. Like you have to go after God first. He'll reveal to you that he's real. That you'll, you'll feel him. That you'll feel him inside you. And you really, but if you really want to like go after like your calling, there's probably people here that know what their calling is. They don't know how to go about it and know what to do. Like, just seek God. He'll show you. That's, that's the bottom line. Just seek God more than you seek anything. Last thing I want to just kind of say and like pray about that I want y'all to pray about too is for especially the youth because I believe that uh Kind of like the older generation, y'all are kind of really set in their ways. But like one thing I, I really thought about while I was at the ramp, it's just like a new standard for Christianity. I think I think the standards is kind of like dip. We're like we're okay with just being churchgoers, and that's not what it's about. Like going to church won't get you to heaven. But that's one thing I want everybody to really pray about is just having a new standard for themselves for God. Like not just being okay with just spending, you know, a little bit of time with them. Just praying, you know, five minutes. Like, they come here at 5, what was it, 5.30 in the morning? They're here at 5.30 in the morning, like, praying. And if you can make it here without falling asleep on the way over here or something, like, get here and be with them and do that. Because, like, God will really move miraculously if you just really seek after them. So that's, what, that's one thing I just want everybody to pray about is this, and I'm, I'm done, is this a new standard. The new standard that you will seek after God daily and just put him first and just set aside, you know, you can sit. I mean, we all can just sit, be entertained by this thing. TV, games, just texting, talking to people. But like, we really need to be entertained and just, like, just really want a desire to go after God. So you, just because y'all are younger doesn't, doesn't change the fact that God won't move in your life. Like, Everybody, everybody says he's not a respecter of person, which he's not. But he is a respecter of how much time you put into his life. Yeah, like, he'll move in your life if you move in his. And that's all there really is to it. So, I think that's about done. That's all I really got to say. said though in the times that we live in there's a cry going forward to God's people into this generation especially as young people right especially for you all and it says you know who is truly hungry and thirsty who is truly hungry and thirsty who has a true desire for God and what are you going to do about it what are you going to do with it I mean when he talks about looking on the inside and what's down deep on the inside of you I mean, yeah, as human beings, yeah, we might have different characters and traits, things like that. But we all should be in one mind, one accord, and to know, you know, know who God is and how to seek Him and how to search for Him and, and what that looks like, right? Knowing the Word of God, being in prayer and going after Him. Like He said, if we can sit for hours and do things that just entertain us, how much more would our lives change? And what would that look like if we really begin to seek God and a relationship with Him, a true relationship with Him? And tonight you have to ask yourself, yeah, some of us are 12 to 19 years old or old or whatever. But, but in your life, what can God do? How can he work? And how truly hungry and thirsty are you really? Right? And what are you doing about it? What are you doing with it? What are you doing about this call that's going forward? If we're sitting here and getting ready for either a great falling away or a great outpouring, which one are you going to be in? What are you going to be a part of? If it says God is, is ready and he is beginning to move in this generation and beginning to move on young people. And there's a call going forward for you guys to, to, begin to be God's hands and feet. Be his mouthpiece, right? And all this time, you know, we talked about it in Sunday school a little bit. We're restricting God from moving. We're restricting God from speaking. So here we are each and every day when he says, listen, I've called you to go out. I've called you to, to go forward. Into this world, outside these four walls, what Bailey's talking about, taking this gospel, taking this fire, and going out there and sharing it. Share your testimony, share your love, share your passion, right? But we don't. We don't. 
I, I'm, I'm too awkward, he's too weird, I'm too nervous. I have, I'm socially awkward, I have social anxiety, I get too nervous. We gotta start praying for that boldness he's talking about. Start praying for that God, I, need, I wanna step out of the boat onto the waves if I have to, right? That kind of mentality. Because not only is that going to change your life, it's going to change people's lives around you. Amen? Amen. 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 Right? And that's what it's all about. Letting that stuff catch fire. Take this fire you have on the inside of you. How many of you guys tonight answer, you know, you can answer in your own mind to yourself. Have ever had a relationship with God? Yes or no? Have you backslid? Have you got away from him? Yes, I did know Jesus. Yes, I, I loved him. I walked with him. I loved his word. I, I felt his presence. I felt his spirit. Now I don't. How many of us have never been saved ever? A day of my life, I don't know. You know, someone told me when I was five years old, I was saved. I don't, you know, but I'm not sure. Or how many of you guys said, yes, I was. I've, I've got away from my backslid. Tonight is your night to make things right. Tonight is your night. When we have prayer here to be, when we have this altar call to come to God. It, whether it be for boldness, that anxiety, a family member, more of him. Get your priorities straight. Here we are in this new year with this fast and prayer going on. To say, God, help me get my eyes fixed on you, Lord, and off of this world. God says, listen, listen, there's a call going out by the Spirit of God. It says, who is truly hungry and thirsty? They will be filled. They will be filled with my Spirit, with His presence. But you've got to want it. And you've got to hunger and thirst for it, right? And I know sometimes, you know, we can come in here and it sounds crazy. It sounds wild. It sounds far-fetched, right? But all those things about Jesus are. It's, it's crazy to serve God, right? It's awesome. It's mind-blowing. It's life-changing. It's, it's the best thing I've ever done in my life, right? And it can be for you, too. Let's all stand. Everybody stand. We're going to open these altars up. And God's here. The presence of God's here. You can feel the praise and worship the sanctuary. Even in here tonight. Even right now, there's something stirring. There's a moving. There's a shaking, right? we got people coming here at 5.30 in the morning seeking God. We've got to get after it. We've got to get after it now. Because we don't know when he's going to come back. We don't know when he's going to call us home. We don't know how much time we have left in our life. We've got to stop playing games. We've got to stop running around on God. We've got to start, well, I might start serving the procrastination, right? I might serve him, I might not. I might get in, I might not. I'll do it tomorrow. I don't know about tonight. I'm having a weird atmosphere. I'm not so sure. What if they look at me? Get that junk out of your mind, amen? Get that junk out of your mind and say, God, it's me and you. Jesus, it's you or nothing. This world cannot satisfy me. This world cannot give me what I need, Amen. And it ain't going to satisfy you. If it does, it says sin's pleasurable for a season. That yeah, Guess what that means? It's coming to an end. The season ends. And then where are you at? What are you left with at the end of a season? Nothing. Emptiness. Brokenness. On your way to the devil's hell. Amen. Right now, everybody just kind of bow your heads. Begin to pray. These altars are open right now. If you want to gather around these altars in a season of prayer, I'm going to begin to pray over you guys. I want you guys to begin to pray. Begin to move right now. Come on. The altars are open right now. Lift your hands. Praise God. Walk around this room. Fall on your face. Get on these altars. Whatever it is that you feel comfortable doing. Holy Spirit, God, right now, move, Jesus, right now. For these young men and these young women, God, that truly hunger, that truly thirst after you, God. And let them be filled with your presence, God. Let them feel you like they never have before. Right now, come on, I know there's more. Come on, move, 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 move. Let it go right now. Let that jump go. Get it out of your life right now. If your feet feel like they weigh 100 pounds a piece, that's the devil. And the devil's a liar, amen? Get up here right now. Get on this altar. You need your life to change. You need your family to change. You need things to look different in your life. Come to this altar and let it happen. Let it happen. See what happens. If you'll move, God will meet you in this place, amen? If you'll take the first step toward him, he'll take the next 10 to you if he has to, amen? He'll meet you in these altars, but it's up to you. We can stand back there afraid. We can stand back there alone and scared and scared of the unknown. Or we can begin to move toward Jesus and see what he has for us. I'll make you this deal. I'll give you this offer. If you don't feel Jesus, if Jesus doesn't do something awesome in your life, the world will take you back. 100% guaranteed. The world will take you right back. The devil will take you right back. No questions asked. But why not try Jesus? Why not come to this amazing thing we hear so many people talk about? I've never met one person that says, man, I'm glad that I never served Jesus. At the end of my life, I hope, you know, I'm glad I didn't serve Jesus. I'm glad I didn't know Jesus. Man, I'm glad I never fell for that fooey church stuff, that crazy church junk that they do down there. I've never heard one person say that. All I've ever heard in my entire life is, man, I'm glad I served Jesus. Man, I love the Lord. Man, I'm glad he touched my family, my mom, my dad, me. 
Whatever it is, right? Right now, this altar is open. And if you need God, if you need Jesus, if you're ready for that real hunger, that real thirst, and really, really ready to go after Him, He's here. He's here. Let's pray to Heavenly Father right now. Holy Spirit, God, begin to move, God, by your spirit, God, your presence in this place, Father. Right now, God, meet with these young men, these young women in this room, on this altar, God, right now. Begin to break chains, God. Begin to tear walls down, Father. Begin to move in their life like you never have before, God. Let them have that true hunger and that true thirst for you and only you, God. Because you're the only one that can satisfy, God. You're the only one that can give us what we truly need, Father. Right now, God, seek him. Seek him like you need him, right? Not like you just need it. But, I mean, you need it, right? It's not just a want anymore. It's a desire. We have to have it. Amen? Go after it with everything that you have.
begin to move, begin to change, begin to transform. When we pray for new fire, a fresh and a new, you better believe it's going to happen. And when it happens, you take it and do something with it. Amen? You do something about it. Don't let it sit and go stale and stagnant in your life. Do something with it. When you feel like you can run through that back wall back there, take that same thing out there and do something with it. Amen? Do something about it. Tell someone about Jesus. This world is so desperate and hungry for any kind of love, any kind of hope. They'll take it. They'll receive it. Now's a better time to go out and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ than there ever has been in the existence of the world. I'm telling you. They want prayer. They need prayer. And they, they want hope. They want love. And somebody's going to share it with them. Amen? And it's you. It's you. I know it's tough. I know it can be awkward. But it's our responsibility. Amen? It's on you guys. All right, let's pray. You guys go back there and get something to eat. We'll drag the games out. Like stuff. You guys can hang out until they're done over there. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, God, for your love, mercy, and kindness, God. God, thank you for Bailey, Father, for blessing him. God is calling on his life. God, thank you for those here tonight, Father, that are here in your presence, God, to hear your word, God, to hear there is hope and there is love and there is still, it's still found in the mighty name of Jesus, God, that there is still hope for them, hope for this crazy world, God. Help us, Lord Jesus, to have that true hunger and thirst, God, after you, Lord. And I, I pray, God, that we can be filled, that they will be filled, Father, and that name of Jesus, God. Lord, I pray we never take it for granted, God, that we come into your presence, into your house, Father, that we never let a moment pass us by, God, that we don't make this count, God, that we don't press in, God, and seek you, Lord, for all that you are, God, to get your glory, to get something out of your word, God, something this world can't give us and we can't get on our own, Father, that the flesh can't give us, Father, only the Spirit, Lord, right now, God, bless these young people, God, that the Spirit is willing and the flesh is weak. God, right now, bless and cleanse this food. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Be blessed. Go in the name of Jesus.